Hi everyone, welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and this video is all about the third generation Intel Core processors. I'm actually going to start this video off with an unboxing, which we don't typically do for processors because, well, let's face it, unboxing of proce unboxings of processors can be fairly boring because there's not a whole lot to actually show. There's a lot to talk about with processors, but not necessarily to show. So, of course, you get your Core i7 processor instruction guide right there. It comes with a logo on the, or a sticker on the back there that you can put on your case. You get the processor itself, of course, which is in a protective clamshell. And then you get a stock Intel heatsink fan, uh, which a lot of folks will use. It will work just great. Uh, if you are going to be going into overclocking, which um, I'm definitely going to be with this one because it is a K-series processor, which is unlocked for overclocking, uh, it's a good choice to possibly upgrade to an aftermarket heatsink fan, which might give you better cooling and then overall better performance and better results with your overclocking. Uh, now we'll move on to the processor itself and I'm going to give a little bit of a history lesson here because Intel for the past oh, five or six years has been doing a cadence with their releases of processors which they have called tick tock. Now a tick, generally speaking, is a manufacturing process update, which generally means that the manufacturing process is shrunk down. It becomes smaller. Uh, the actual die on the processor becomes smaller as well, which you can't see because it's underneath the heat spreader right there. Uh, and then they also have what is called a TOC, which is an architecture update. Uh, TOCs generally yield better performance increases, uh, whereas ticks generally will uh, lead to some, definitely some performance increases. Um, but also will allow them to move the architecture to a smaller manufacturing process which will usually lead to uh, better efficiency. Now first off let's talk about what is the same when we're referencing an Intel third generation core processor. Uh, the code name up to this point has been Ivy Bridge and we're going to be referencing this in comparison to the Intel second generation core processors. Code name for those is Sandy Bridge. So next I'm going to talk about similarities between second generation Intel Core processors, uh, which the code name for was Sandy Bridge, and I have one of those right here. It's a 2500K, as you can tell by my writing on there, versus the third generation Intel Core CPUs, and that's this one right here, which is a 3770K. Uh, now first off, uh, again, Intel releases their processors and they use a tick-tock cadence. and um, the Ivy Bridge, or third generation, is a tick, which means it is a manufacturing process update. It uses the same uh, general CPU architecture as the Sandy Bridge here, but it's a 22 nanometer process. So the die itself is actually smaller, uh, and they also have some other benefits that they've gained by going with that. Uh, but similarities between the two. One is that for this particular line, and that's for the 1155 socket, uh, they will only go up to quad core processors. And I say only um, because there actually is this guy right here, uh, also known as Sandy Bridge E. This is a 3960X. This is from Intel's enthusiast platform, Socket 2011. And uh, these are what you want to go with if you're going to do some really heavy duty computing. These go up to hexacore or six core. And um, those are generally geared towards the uh, highest level of computing platforms. So you do get up to quad core with the uh, third generation. Uh, and you do get hyper threading if you go with an i7 version. Uh, Hyperthreading is basically allows your um, operating system to recognize one physical core as two logical cores. So if you have a multi-threaded application that runs, say, two, three, four plus uh, threads, you can actually address up to eight cores even if you have a quad-core uh, processor that has physically four cores. Now, another great thing that is the uh, same between the two of these is that they use the same socket. That's socket 1155, and if I flip the Ivy Bridge processor over here, uh, you will notice all the little pads there on the bottom. There are 1,155 of those, and guess what? There's also 1,155 here on my Sandy Bridge processor. Now, the great thing about this is that they are, that means that these are backwards compatible. Now, backwards compatibility is great if you happen to invest in the uh, Sandy Bridge platform uh, in the past year or so because that means you can upgrade to an Ivy Bridge processor. Uh, specifically, the H61, H67, P67, and Z68 chipsets are compatible with third generation Intel Core processors. Uh, and you might need a BIOS update for your motherboard, but they will drop into most Socket 1155 motherboards. Now, there is a new chipset released by Intel called Z77, 
but that also has a bunch of great features that is released in line with this. Uh, so if you get one of those, you get some additional features such as integrated USB 3.0. Uh, now, some other similarities between the two chips. Uh, the naming suffixes are the same. For, so, for instance, this is a 2500K. The K at the end of that name indicates that it is an unlocked processor. You can, uh, you can up the turbo boost multiplier uh, as high as you want within the uh, range set by Intel uh, versus the non-K versions, which are locked, and you can only uh, have a slight margin of overclocking for those. Uh, so you can get a K-series processor like my 30, 3770K right here. And that allows for overclocking, which is very popular. Uh, the other benefit, actually, uh, update for k skew processors, such as this one here with Ivy Bridge, is that they actually have a 100 megahertz higher base clock. So, uh, for instance, the 3770K has a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz. The 3770 without the K has a base clock of 3.4 gigahertz. So you do get a little bit of a boost if you go with a K-SKU uh, along with that overclocking potential. Uh, you can also have, for instance, S-SKU processors. Those have a lower uh, thermal design power uh, than the non-S-SKUs. And then you also have possibly T-SKUs. So, uh, for example, if you have, I'm going to be making up processor names, but if you had a 3770T, that would be a much lower TDP uh, than the 3770 by itself. Um, I don't think there is a 3770T, those are yet to come, uh, but you do uh, maintain that same suffix uh, naming convention that you did with Sandy Bridge, so you can tell the difference between those, especially if you're looking for a low power system, such as a home theater PC. So now we've talked about the similarities between the second and third generation Intel Core CPUs. Let's talk about what's different, this being a new processor release. Uh, it, has some new features. So again, Ivy Bridge is a tick in the cadence of Intel's processor releases, and that means it is a new manufacturing process. It is actually a smaller manufacturing process. It is down to 22 nanometers uh, for the Ivy Bridge versus 32 nanometers for the Sandy Bridge, and that actually makes the die on the processor that's beneath the heat spreader right here uh, smaller. So it's 160 square millimeters for the 22 nanometer Ivy Bridge processors. Uh, and that will result in a few different things. Uh, one is that actually they have packed in more transistors due to the, di due to the manufacturing process shrink. Uh, so you actually get 1.4 billion transistors in the third generation core processors. And that's about 20% more versus the 1.16 billion trans transistors within the Sandy Bridge or second generation uh, core processors. Uh, another thing that they've done, and this is what sort of makes it a tick plus, uh, is they have actually developed a new uh, transistor. They're called Trigate or 3D transistors. Um, it's sort of difficult to just explain to you. Hopefully we'll have a, a picture that we can show you here that will give you a better idea. Uh, but essentially what you get with the 3D transistors is better performance and less power. Uh, you'll notice the thermal design power of the third generation core processors, all of even the top level ones, like the 3770K here, is 77 watt uh, thermal design power, and that is versus 95 watt of the Sandy Bridge. Uh, now, the benefit there is pretty obvious. Um, just from out of the gate, you have uh, less power being used by the processor, and generally speaking, you will get better performance out of the third generation than you will out of the second generation. So uh, lower TDP versus Sandy Bridge, uh, and then also has a huge potential for um, the dual core, mobile, dual core and mobile processors that have yet to be released. As of the filming of this video, uh, Intel has only released the uh, i5 and i7 varieties of the uh, third generation core processors, and we still have i3s yet to come, and then there's gonna be a whole slew of mobile processors that will also be released uh, one of the great benefits, of course, with lower power usage is when you're using a mobile processor in, say, a laptop, uh, you will have, obviously, less power usage, uh, enhanced battery life. Uh, you also get Turbo Boost 2.0. Uh, they have uh, upgraded the power control unit within the processor, um, so your Turbo Boost is going to be more efficient. Uh, that is what lets the processor automatically overclock its cores uh, or drop them down or uh, put them into standby or, or off mode. Uh, when the cores aren't being used to save power. So um, you, get more, uh, you get more speed when you need it, and um, when you don't, it will turn it off and not use the power. Um, one of the huge uh, upgrades of Ivy Bridge versus Sandy Bridge is that you have a new I integrated GPU. Um, for quite a while now, Intel has actually been integrating a graphics processor onto the die of their, pro of their uh, CPUs. And uh, with Intel Sandy Bridge, you had HD 2000 and HD 3000 with the iGPU. 
Uh, with third generation Ivy Bridge, you get HD 4000 and HD 2500, res respectively. Um, now, these give you about double the performance versus the iGPU and the Sandy Bridge processor. You also get DirectX 11 support. Uh, you also get faster Quick Sync. They've uh, enabled Quick Sync 2.0, which is about twice as fast as the already really fast Quick Sync um, performance of the Sandy Bridge processor. Um, Quick Sync, if you guys aren't familiar with it, will allow you to use that integrated GPU uh, to encode video on the fly, and it just does an amazing job at that. Um, when you, for instance, want to take a 1080p video and you want to re-encode it down to the size so you can um, put it on, say, a mobile phone to take on the go. So a uh, great performance there and about twice as fast with the third generation. Uh, you also get some enhanced media options uh, such as wireless display. Uh, we have another video on that if you guys want to take a look that we did with Asus um, to allow you to wirelessly transmit uh, to a wireless display with uh, appropriate hardware, of course. Uh, another added bonus of uh, jumping up to Ivy Bridge is that you get PCI Express Generation 3.0 support. Uh, that gives a, about double the effective bandwidth versus PCI Express Gen 2. Um, so especially if you're going to be looking at upgrading video cards in the future, uh, you're going to have a, a much greater bandwidth available for that video card, uh, as well as other add-on add -on cards that use the PCI Express bus. Uh, you also get some overclocking support. Um, if you guys are interested in overclocking, we have an additional video on that. Um, if you are going to be overclocking, definitely recommended to get a uh, processor that name whose name ends in a K, such as the 3770K here. 3570K is another great option for that. Uh, I did also want to mention the memory. Uh, you get some enhanced memory dividers if you want to set your memory to overclock speeds. Uh, the official support is up to DDR3-1600. Uh, and you have overclock speeds that can go even faster than that. And another lesser known feature of the third generation Intel Core processors is that they actually have an integrated hardware-based random number generator. It's called Intel Secure Key, and uh, it is essentially, it's a greatly improved over a software-based random number generator. It is more secure, uh, and it will basically give you enhanced security for your data encryption that goes uh, on the fly. So if you deal with sensitive documents or important data, uh, the hardware-based random number generator is a great benefit for jumping up to Ivy Bridge. And that's going to wrap it up for our overview of the Intel third generation core series of desktop processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV and if you enjoyed today's video please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.